Hello, this is Sharon Mistretta, and welcome to the sixth lesson in a series of Scratch programming techniques in regards to a three-question quiz. So when we had, uh, in our last lesson, we had developed the first part of the Ask User uh, routine. Now what we need to do is we need to ask the question um, the prompt to the user. And I had uh, done a um, draw attention to the quiz sentence, asked you to formulate that. So I'm going to copy it from here, Command C. And I've noted that I'm going to be a duration of five seconds. And um, this time I'm going to use a think. So I'm going to come over to looks and I'm going to use a think and I'm going to attach it right to the bottom after. The if statement. I'm going to tap inside of the um, information area where I have my text and I'm going to do a command V and I'm going to put that for five seconds. So here I am going to ask this person, uh, my user, a question. I'm going to save at this point and let's just tap on ask user and you can see right here that it has displayed my question. So I just tapped right, and I didn't have to run the whole program, I just tapped on the um, my routine. So since current question is set to a one, it went down this leg of the if statement and broadcast question one. So it painted the question one for me and then it did the think okay for five seconds so now what i need to do is i need to examine the answer that the user gives me and this is going to require another control section but what we're going to do is use something that's called a loop and it is going to loop around and around and around until it receives a certain condition, reaches a certain condition. And that's handy when you want to ask your user a question and you want to make sure they enter a one, a two, or a three. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to ask them to repeat until, or ask the program to repeat until it senses a one, two, or three from my user. So how do I do that? So I would be able to repeat until, and I am going to ask the user, so that's in my blue section, and I am going to, excuse me, my sensing, and I'm going to ask, so you need to put this in here first, ask, and we are going to have a, uh, one, two, here's my select the correct answer in my worksheet. So enter a one, two, or three to answer the question in the quiz window. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to place it in here. And it is going to wait. Now, here is something that is uh, indicative of Scratch. And I'm going to just check this answer box here because answer is a variable that we do not create. It is provided to us by Scratch. So what I need to do is I need to uh, query that answer, but the best practice for any programming language, especially for Scratch, where you cannot do a set of that variable, you know how I did the set back here? I did a set, sorry, I did a set of current question to one, a set of user score to zero. Okay, I can't do a set on answer. It belongs to the operating system. It belongs to Scratch. So I need to, whenever I get an answer, whenever I use the answer, you just need to move it to a variable that you can manipulate and that you can use. So I have in my data, I have round to integer. Remember I had created that in the very beginning and that is set to a negative one because I'm going to use that for two purposes. I'm going to use it to convert the number that the user gives me and also to a whole number. And I'm also going to use that as a flag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set 
round to integer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into the operators and I'm going to place round to integer inside of that little two. And I'm going to place my answer inside of that little circle. So what I'm asking the operating system to do, the program to do, is I'm asking it to fill my variable that I own, round to integer, to the rounded answer. So if my user enters a 1.3, it'll round it to a 1. If my user ans answers a 2.8, it'll round it to 3. So your user will try to break your program. You have to plan for that. So what I'm doing is I just round it to the nearest integer and then I use that number. So it will ask me for that. Uh, I, this will repeat until. Now let's just fill this repeat until. I need to get two operators here going. So what I need to do, I need to make sure that it's between um, a uh, between a one, two, and a three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat until round to integer. I need a greater than. I'm going to nudge that in here. There. And I'm going to need a less than. And I need an and. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take round to integer, that variable, and I'm going to make sure that it is greater than zero. And you have to repeat the variable again. And round to integer is less than four. So when dealing with integers, I've rounded it. Therefore, I don't have to worry if my user has entered a 1.6. And I just make sure that it is greater than a zero and less than a four. So that means that the valid answers will be one, two, and three. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this and then let us try this out. I'm going to change this to the larger um, layout and I'm going to take it from the top. Hello and welcome to a quiz on numbering systems used by computers. That's my quiz. Okay. And I didn't call ask user. Is that a funny? So the reason why I did nothing is because I didn't call the routine that I asked it that I just wrote. Okay, so here is a prime example that you need to call the routine that you are going to use. So I'm going to do a command S. I am going to click green. Hello and welcome to a quiz on numbering systems used by computers. And there's my quiz. Read the quiz, contents of the quiz window to view and question the question and the three answers. And then here is my enter one, two, or three to answer the quiz below. So let's enter an eight. It won't accept it. A nine. Um, a zero, a negative one. Let's see if it'll do that. Nope. Okay, so now let's enter a 2.3. Okay, so here, do you see that my round to integer is a two? Now, keeping in mind that since I'm writing a quiz, I'm only displaying these by keeping them clicked as I am developing my project. But I would not show my correct answer or my the answer that the uh, user gave me. I would uncheck all of these. But since I am developing, I want these checked. But when you're about to put them into production, so to speak, you would unclick those variables. So now you saw that it only accepted a 1, 2, or a 3, or it rounded. So let's take this from the top again. Now it's not going to do anything else because I haven't done the rest of the code. So hello, welcome to the quiz. Here is read the contents for the possible answers. Here is my ask, and I'm going to put a 1. 
Now, it's not going to do anything yet because I didn't code it. So I'm just going to press stop. And I am going to now go on to my querying of my question one, two, and three. So I'm going to keep this video short and continue on with the next video in building my, um, whether the user has entered the correct answer or not.